Soap Suds, welcome back to another episode of the Geek Soapbox. I'm your host, Lee Pontin. Leva Bates is off making entertainment for you guys. <laughs> so in her stead, my beautiful wife, Kelly Z. Yeah! This room is real echoey. I feel like I'm in a dungeon. Where the hell are we? Why are you in a dungeon? <laughs> Today on the show, we thought we'd talk about Game of Thrones. We just watched episode 8 of season 5, That's but right. by the time you see this, the finale will have aired. So. You will know what happens. What makes it such a good show? It's complex, I think. I mean, you think you know a character and then they can do a complete 180. A good example is Jamie Lannister. Well, him and Cersei both start out as very despicable characters, mm -hmm. but I think by now in the series, I don't think any one person can say, oh, I, I still hate Jamie Lannister, I think he's had, and I think that's what makes it such a great show, is so character driven. All the characters are so dynamic, and we've seen heroes fall and falter, and we've seen villains rise. And some people we love to hate, like Cersei. There's still some constants in the show, yeah. and I think if season one taught us anything, you know, your biggest heroes may not be around for very long. No, and that's the other thing about this show that I love so much are the surprises. Now, I don't know, I don't read the books, I haven't read them, so I I don't know if the people that have read them are actually surprised by anything that happens. I've heard that the book one and season one are pretty much identical, but then it starts to kind of stray. And there being no more books at the moment. Right. <laughs> to continue <laughs> it. I mean, I know the producers have those storylines and have talked to George R. R. Martin and know where he's going and they intend to end in the same place but i think the journey how they get there is going to be very yeah. different and lots of ups and downs along the way surprises deaths yeah the surprises i mean there are so many hi guys leva bates here i'm really behind i've only seen the first episode of season five but it got ruined for me I stayed off my timeline. I knew it was the finale, so I don't read my timelines. I don't read my feeds. I don't know why you can't just call someone on the phone and be like, yo, did you just see that? Nah, y'all have to do it on social media. So I kept off of that. Didn't get spoiled. I knew something crazy happened. I knew someone kicked the bucket. I'm not gonna say who, cause I'm nice. I'm not gonna ruin it for you. But I got tweeted and someone's Twitter handle was the name, R.I.P. Hmm. Are you kidding me? And then you tweet me this. You tweet me about wrestling. And your name is R.I.P. So I tweeted out, thanks for spoiling Game of Thrones because of your Twitter, ha Twitter handle. I have one guy tweet me and say, Well, it's been two days. Oh, two days. Holy sh**. Two days. I'm sorry. I'm really busy and behind on all of my TV shows. I haven't had a day off. I have not had a day off in probably months. Because I got rehearsals, wrestling, traveling, sewing, cleaning, cooking, shopping. I got life. I have not sat on my couch and watched TV in weeks. So when the hell do I have time to catch up on Game of Thrones? Some of us don't have that luxury. So y'all need to watch it. I'm not happy. I'm like literally probably not gonna watch this season. What the f <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Y'all over there like, oh, it's been two days. I'm sorry. I have a career I'm trying to work on, bitch. That's my rant. If there's a show going on and your favorite character kicks the bucket, please do not use RIP this person as your Twitter handle and then tweet about other stuff. Cause guess what? You've probably ruined it for a lot of people. And those people might actually be professional fighters and may want to punch you in the face. Thanks. You know, at the end of season one, you had Ned getting decapitated. And I think that still remains the most shocking moment for me in the entire series. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would say, oh, the Red Wedding was the most shocking, or Joffrey's death, even though most people were probably glad Relieved. that it happened, yeah. was still pretty shocking, especially since it occurred so early in season four. And we've been used to seeing this framework of the penultimate episode of each season being kind of the, the climax. Right. And um, season four just kind of threw us yeah. for a loop because right. I think All he died in episode two of season four. I expected Joffrey to be around for a while and to be annoying <laughs> many more it's never episodes. Never going away. Ned uh, getting beheaded was still, I think, 
I think that one was significant because it was the first sign that you can't get comfortable with anything. I think that that first shocking moment is the one that sets the course mm -hmm. for the show. And for all of yeah. season one, I was watching going, my one constant is Ned, mm -hmm. you know? And I also really liked Arya. So by the end of season one, I was like, oh, please, Arya, <laughs> you know? <laughs> please make it. So every subsequent death or murder or whatever happens, it, it's less shocking mm -hmm. because you grow accustomed to it. Again, like Red Wedding, I mean, that was a massacre. Yeah, my mouth was hanging open the whole scene. But you come to expect things like that mm -hmm. from the show. So going into season four, I did not expect, one of my favorite moments in all of season four is the Mountain and the Viper mm -hmm. fight. And I mean, talk about shocking and intense. That was definitely the most intense moment of season four for me. But that scene was building and building, oh, and he was just yelling. And, like, and, just, and the problem is, like, he could have ended it. Yeah, And his yeah. stupid pride got in the mm -hmm. way, and that happens a lot to, I feel like, a lot of characters. Ubris. 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 He could have had his revenge, but instead, oh, he had a monologue on and got his head smashed in. Just, I mean, <laughs> I just... And that actor, that, and that's the other thing, is I had really grown to like that character mm -hmm. as well. Prince Oberyn? Yes, and from the moment he stepped on the screen, I thought, you know, he's this kind of like smarmy Romeo type guy, but he had an agenda, and it was clear. I just rewatched this morning the episode before where he goes and tells Tyrion that he'll be his champion, and that's such a great scene. Yeah. That whole monologue about how he actually met Tyrion when he was a baby, and he thought he wasn't a monster even though Cersei had claimed he was this deformed monster. Right. And season five for me, the beginning of the season for me was a little bit confusing and slow. Like I didn't really know what was going on, especially Arya's storyline. A girl does not know who a girl is not when a girl is not a girl anymore. <laughs> Winter's coming. I feel like season five is a lot of moving all the chess pieces into place for the end game. It's so much has happened, it's like action, 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 mm -hmm. action, action, that at some point it needed to slow down, and I don't want to say it's like the strategy of the authors, mm -hmm. but that's kind of what it feels like, you know, like at some point he has to start moving the characters yeah. into place. And certain characters are meeting, too, that mm -hmm. we've been waiting for for a while, like you right. said, Tyrion and Danny, and yeah. even, even though it was short-lived, uh, Brienne and Arya, when she finally mm -hmm. found Arya, um, that was a really interesting matchup because I feel like they kind of saw what similarities they had with each other, right. even though Arya ultimately decided to, you know, Go keep, right. yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm really hoping that just from the scene we just watched with uh, Sansa and Reek Theon, <laughs> that um, they can kind of really band together and take. Down. Yeah, hopefully um, she can help him get back yeah. to who he was. He's had a lot of ups and downs too. His character arc has been really interesting. Yeah, and, and I really appreciate that they could have taken the easy out with him. That as soon as Sansa was in distress, that he you know snapped and stepped in and mm -hmm. saved the day. Yeah. And they didn't mm -hmm. go that way. He's literally been beaten down yeah. to the ground. Yeah, his manhood taken away, his identity yes. just stripped of him, everything. Ramsey. I guys gotta go. And that's kind of like a character that just I, you hate the whole time. I mean, I don't know if there's been any redeeming moments no, with him. No, no, there isn't. Because unlike Circe, who like her redeeming factor is her overwhelming love for her children and her family, mm -hmm. which I can respect, yeah. even though <laughs> it causes point. her to do things that are completely inappropriate and wrong and you hate her for but she's driven by her family. Whereas Ramsey, I don't know what he's driven by. Despicable the whole time. <laughs> and Jon Snow, we haven't even really touched on no. his whole storyline yet. Like, I mean, he, came, he came from nothing mm -hmm. to Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Because he's sort of been, and, and kind of Daenerys at the same time too, these different worlds, and you know, you had Jon Snow just on his own, kind of doing his own thing, and these other characters, and Daenerys, and like everything is sort of coming together now, and it's it's yeah. really cool, and that's the coolest part to see right now, I think, in the series, is everything kind 
kind of, like you said, the chess pieces have moved and they're all moving closer together. The season six should be... Yeah, I think it's going to be good because, you know, the analogy, that it's a really good analogy of who's on top right now. Oh, now yeah. the next person's mm -hmm. on top. Oh, now the next person's on top. The only thing that's going to work is if you smash that cycle. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be at odds and always trying to outdo the other person because something bigger than them is coming. And the only way it's going to work is if that system is gone and they all band together. Because the White Walkers well, that do itself, not look like they are to be messed with. Yeah, and they just keep growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the more people they kill, yeah. the bigger their army gets. And they just so. keep moving south and keep mm -hmm. moving south. And like, I don't even know if Daenerys knows that that's happening. Yeah. Like, everyone in Westeros knows. Mm -hmm. But she's over the sea somewhere, and she's like just gonna march in the Westeros, not knowing that this <laughs> army of the undead is coming for them. And then how is that gonna tie in with the characters that we haven't seen all season? Like Bran and yeah. you know, Hodor, and, and we last left them in... With the tree people. I yeah, don't know. <laughs> where were the they? The people with their magic. <laughs> Children under the tree, I guess. I don't know. Where is Nymeria? Where, where is Arya's dire wolf? What? Seriously. It's true. That dog is Cause somewhere. I feel like we, we kind mean, of know the fate. Some of the ones have suffered uh -huh. an ill fate. We saw that. And we know that Jon Snow's dire world kind of shows up. Ghost, he shows up now and again. He ghosts in and out. <laughs> and but Nymeria has been missing since season one. Mm -hmm. But we have no indication of mm -hmm. the death or, you know, any sort no. of inkling as to where this dog might that be. That Nymeria swoops back in at some point. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Saves the day. Well, I'm, I'm really hoping there's some sort of epic scene between Arya and Nymeria where they find each other again. <laughs> Except, you know, Nymeria might not recognize her because she's like faceless and <laughs> not, <laughs> not a girl. Not yet. Not a woman. <laughs> and then, speaking of people that are missing, where's Rickon? Did he go off with Tonks? <laughs> he went into an entire different magical series yeah. altogether. Yeah. Where did she take him? He's flying on a broomstick somewhere. We haven't seen him in a season and a half. <laughs> oh, there's so much happening yeah. on this show. Mm -hmm. I love it a lot. The actors are amazing yeah. in this. Even the, what could be a very dull scene comes to life. Each one of them is committed and believes in their character. It's definitely worth watching if you're not watching it. Right now, you should be. And I think we're going to help you with that. If you are not currently watching Game of Thrones, we're going to get you started. We're going to have a little contest. Ooh, contest. We're giving away the complete first season, collector's edition, Blu-ray, mm -hmm. DVD, digital copy, box set. What we're going to do is make sure you click the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, snap a picture of yourself, subscribing to the channel. Follow the Geek Soapbox on Twitter, tweet that picture, and use the hashtag Geek of Thrones. Geek of Thrones. So from that, we'll just randomly pick a winner. Mm -hmm. You win this, yeah. and we'll send it to and you. And we'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments about the show and where it's going, and who your favorite characters are, and what your favorite season might have been so far. And how do you think it's going to end? Yeah. Are they all going to be friends and holding hands as winter ends and the sun comes to the clouds? And then you see Nymeria running from the distance, like, into the shot. Close up. Hold on. <laughs> Cut to black. Game of Thrones. It's not going to end that way. We'll recap. Again, as always, click that like button. Subscribe to the channel. You can take a picture of you subscribing to the yeah, channel. Yeah, send us anything. Send us your best Game of Thrones cosplay, like pictures of merch you might have. The more creative your picture, the more likely you're going to win this. Yeah! Prizes. It's a new era here at the Geek Soapbox. We're giving away. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you real soon.